caloric nystagmus. Hydrostatic pressure cellae involved in ossicles. Caloric testing is the only examination that can stimulate individual semicircular canals and it has major clinical implications. In 1992, Dr. Yangi found that caloric nystagmus contains vertical and torsional components. However, the aspect of caloric nystagmus varies greatly from person to person. Not all subjects reveal vertical and torsional components. As you can see in this movie, some show purely horizontal nystagmus. It has been clear that neither posterior nor superior canal receives a caloric effect. Thus, caloric nystagmus is a pure horizontal canal ocular reflex. One of the characteristics of caloric nystagmus is a persistent reaction. In the case that the response is good, it continues for more than three minutes. Decay is very slow, and strong nystagmus continues for more than one minute. This means that the cupola keeps on bending in a constant manner. Can classical convection theory explain the long duration of nystagmus? The specific gravity of end wave is approximately 1. End wave is not serous liquid but viscous mucus. Also, the horizontal canal is a very small organ. Large amount of kinetic energy is necessary to maintain the movement of mucus for more than one minute. It is highly unlikely that tiny potential energy produces great kinetic energy. Cold water caloric response has another feature that the intensity in the supine position is greater than that in the prone position. This finding contradicts a world's second law because amplifugal bending occurs in the supine position and amplipetal stimulation is caused in the prone position. Classical convection theory cannot explain this feature. Anatomically, the cupola extends from the surface of the crystal to the ceiling of the ampulla, forming what appears to be a watertight seal. We do not agree with the supposition that the cupola keeps on bending like a swinging door for more than one minute. In animal experiments, Dr. Otsuka reported that the cupola moves like a diaphragm when the compression is weak. Instead of classical convection theory, Ichijo proposed the hydrostatic pressure theory in relation to ossicles. When the tympanic membrane is chilled, the malleus and incus are chilled first because 
air has difficulty conducting heat. This behavior is applied to a down jacket or residential insulation. The thermal conductivity of a bone is much greater than that of the air. Osicles act like an air conditioner in summer and chill a part of the end leaf in the long arm of the horizontal canal because membranous canal is in contact with the bone. The chilled end lymph plays a role like the piston of a syringe because the diameter of the long arm is only 0.3 mm. The force F1 arises in the direction of gravity because objects contract when they cool and increase in the intensity. It is clear that the cross-sectional area of the ampulla is 15 times as wide as the cross-sectional area of the long arm. According to Pascal's principle, the force pushing the cupola F2 is 15 times as strong as the force exerted on chilled end leaf F1. Pascal's principle states that when additional pressure is exerted on a confined liquid, the pressure is transmitted equally to all parts of the liquid. As a result, tiny change of the density of end lymph derives big deviation of the cupola and causes brisk nystagmus.